Oh boy, we got a lot to go over. Iran's president is dead. That's right. Also, the International Criminal Court uh, issues multiple arrest warrants for major heads of countries. I'll give you the details on that. All that and more in this video. But I, yeah, I know. It's, it's wild. Let's jump right in. Thank you so much for liking these videos. Here we go. Okay, so just like that, Iran's president is dead from a helicopter crash. Um, yes. <laughs> is the United States celebrating as well as Israel? Well, probably yes. Take a listen to what happened. The Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, and his foreign minister have been killed in a helicopter crash. Their deaths confirmed by Iranian state media overnight, triggering a massive response across the Middle East and around the world. You're watching Fox and Friends First here on a Monday morning. I'm Todd Pyro. And I'm Carly Shimkus. Iran's government calling together a, quote, extraordinary meeting to determine the next steps. Because news of the leader's death comes as Iran plays an influential role in the current instability in the Middle East. State media in Iran confirming the death of President Ibrahim Raisi and that helicopter, along with the country's foreign minister, as well as other officials in security. It comes after a visit to the border with Al Jazeera. Uh, Azerbaijan to meet with a with his counterparts that Raisi's helicopter went missing. This is a closer look at the suspected crash site about 12 miles south of the Azerbaijan Iranian border. Initially, rescue efforts were made even more complicated because of heavy fog. The other two helicopters traveling had made its way back to Iran safely. State media today reporting that the chopper slammed into a mountain peak, although there really haven't been too many specifics on this crash. Today, Israel has reportedly denied any involvement in what happened. Raisi was a potential successor to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. He was elected in 2021, but it was in 2022 when massive protests broke out over women's rights, which put about 22,000 people behind bars. Today, the aftermath of this news is reverberating around the region. Neighboring countries are issuing their condolences, including Iranian-backed militant groups like Hamas, which just issued a statement of sympathy. Now, as far as what this all means going forward, under the Iranian constitution, Iran's vice president must first take over if the president dies and a new presidential election needs to be held within 50 days. Let's bring in Jonathan Gilliam, Navy SEAL and former FBI special agent. Jonathan, good morning to you. What do you think of this development and what it means for Iran, the war in Gaza and the United States as well? Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, the, the president in Iran uh, is not like the president of the United States uh, with the power of decision making uh, that we have here in this country. Um, a lot, the, pretty much, when you look at the elections and how the presidents are picked, even though they they try to play it off as a democracy, really uh, the supreme leader, uh, religious leader, is the one who has the majority of power um, and kind of picks this individual as the next in line. And so uh, I think what you're going to see here as far as what is happening in Iran is going to be a pretty smooth transition of power to the next person, because that power is really, and the decisions that are made are really uh, the decisions of uh, the Supreme Leader and the other pol politicians and leaders that have been involved in the decision-making process for a long time. In the United States, uh, and in, with other enemies of, of Iran, such as Israel, um, if this was back prior to World War II, you might see them make movements uh, because of the chaotic threads that are being sewn through this. Um, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of movement here. Uh, I'd be surprised, especially if the Biden administration got involved in anything. But I tell you who could actually uh, take uh, heed of this, uh, these chaotic threads, is or what I call this, uh, are the revolutionaries in Iran that want change. Those individuals could step up right now and probably cause a lot of disarray uh, if they were actually to act right now at this time. Okay, if you're, in case you're wondering who he was referencing there, uh, here he is, the supreme leader of Iran, Ali Khamenei, 
is uh, the supreme leader since April of 1979, the most powerful political authority in Iran, the Islamic Republic. Yeah, quite different over there. And in case you're wondering, uh, Vladimir Putin, you can see the headline here, Russia stresses strong ties with Iran as Putin calls already the interim president already over there um, involved in Iran's business, already over there meddling in their business. You can uh, already imagine the political movements that are being made over there. This also comes here as the ICC, the International Criminal Court, requests arrest warrants for not only Benjamin Netanyahu from Israel, but also Hamas leaders, both of them, over, quote, war crimes. Yes. Remember here that they have also requested arrest warrants against Vladimir Putin in the past, as well as Russia's Maria Lvova Belova. So they are not picking any sides. If they see that you are uh, committing war crimes, they will issue arrest warrants for you. International Criminal Court seeking arrests of Hamas's uh, Yaha Sinwar, as well as Ismail Hanyi, and Mohammed Diaf, as well as Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, announcing this here today, that they have filed applications for arrest warrants against all of these people. Yeah, for allegedly committing war crimes during the conflict in Gaza. Prosecutor Kareem Khan said in a statement that based on evidence collected and examined by his office, he has, quote, reasonable grounds to believe that Netanyahu and Gallant, quote, bear res criminal responsibility for war crimes and crimes against humanity committed on the territory of the state of Palestine. Vladimir Putin is probably sitting back smiling, thinking this is probably exactly what he wanted. He said those alleged crimes include, quote, starvation of civilians as a method of warfare and intentionally directing attacks against a civilian population. Probably note the key word there is intentionally. Khan also said, he is seeking arrest warrants for the Hamas leaders, Sinwar, its top political leader, and its military commander, Mohammed Diaz. You can also see one of the top headlines here. Yahoo's rival threatens to quit his war cabinet over Gaza's strategy. <sighs> yeah, you know, and I mean, at first, when Hamas attacked Israel, the outrage, and, you know, the attack, you know, mostly out of the blue. Of course, you always have the argument that this, you know, you know, war has been going on for many, many years in the background, but this attack was out of the blue. And of course, you know, we're going to get, you know, a lot of different opinions and stuff out of this. You know, Israel attacked back to, to defend the attack that came on them. But, a lot of people think now that Israel has kind of gone over and above, you know, what they've needed to do to get Hamas back and, uh, with the, you know, casualties that has been there. And they have not quite taken the care needed to, uh, you know, needed to protect, you know, other civilians and protect, you know, people around them. Um, the problem here is that Hamas is just known to hide underneath hospitals, hide in tunnels, hide in, um, you know, literally in civilian areas, uh, thereby, you know, complicating the matters. And uh, this is where it gets very, very difficult um, 
where you know Israel is saying you know Hamas is it's doing this type of stuff, and uh, which does not really make it okay. But you know Israel is standing by their their statement saying we're not going to let Hamas keep doing this because Hamas is still attacking Israel. You know to this day, which complicates things. So. Um, you know, you could go in there and argue either side. You know, there's not a lot of people arguing Hamas's side. But the problem is, is there's a lot of people arguing that, you know, Israel needs to stop. But the problem is, is Hamas has not stopped. So, you guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Meanwhile, we have Vladimir Putin <laughs> over there still attacking Ukraine to this day. We've lost hundreds of thousands of people on both sides, Ukraine and Russia, and it kind of makes you wonder what will happen. The problem here is that if Ukraine, say, surrenders to Russia and gives up a large portion of Ukraine and that land, Vladimir Putin is going to do what they have already done with the land that they have, you know, captured at least temporarily, is they're going to take the men that are there in that land and send them into the Russian army and put those men on the front line, front lines in the Russian army, thereby basically um, massacring them. So it's not like you're really saving anybody or not many lives because Putin is going to literally send them into the front lines or, you know, do with them what they will going forward. So it's uh, tough situations all around. All this leading to many, many, many year wars that uh, the world right now cannot escape. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I will keep you up to date. Thank you for liking and share these videos with anybody that needs to hear this information. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. Click here to see unexpected social security raise. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.